Hi guys, Sourdough Kathy here, and I'm going to take you on another tour today and a little bit of mishmash in between. So we're starting here in the front, as usual. No, not really. But I wanted to show you how good my cucumbers are doing, the lemon cucumbers, and we actually have fruit. There you go, and there's one back there. So they've greened up finally. There's another little guy in there. And I have had problems. I've had to put magnesium on, on, magnesium on them quite a few times now. But they're finally starting to look nice and healthy now. So flowers are doing wonderful. And it takes a while. It always does take time for them to get going. But even the snapdragons are getting some uh, flowers on them, finally. Um, my dahlias aren't getting anything yet. These are doing just fine. I'm going to try and get down these stairs without breaking my neck. Uh, I have uh, one head of lettuce left over here. I've either given them away or David's eaten them. I do have some new ones started as you can see right here. These snapdragons and flowers are all doing wonderful. Now over here the other day I had a lot of red a uh, lot of red uh, hello tomatoes and as you can see there are there are some really nice ones in here right now, which I'm going to take off today. Now, down in here, my uh, radishes seem to be doing okay. They're not bolting or anything. My dogs are acting like nuts, as usual. I'm going to take you around here, slowly. Now, here are the carrots. These are the nanties, the ones that survived. Those are the colored ones that survive. And right in here, we do have the, the new seeds that I put in for the beets. These are the beets that I planted in here, and they seem to be doing fine. Uh, I'm sure they'll have enough time to give me at least some small ones. Over here we have, uh, this is the smallest tomato plant, ooh, and there are some red tomatoes. One just dropped off. That's a, I don't know why that dropped off. It shouldn't have, but anyway, it wasn't quite right. Anyway, here are my cabbages. I'm going to step away so I can just give you a bird's eye view. And some have... This one's got a small head, not too big. This one here has a nice big thick head. The smaller one, it seems like cabbages grow in the depth or the width that they have to grow. Now this one has a lot of leaf, but not a very big head to it for whatever reason. Now I'm going to take you on over to the other tomatoes. Okay, here we are over at the main tomatoes. And as you can see, there are a lot of tomatoes on these vines. The, I can't believe the size of these for cherry tomatoes. But here are some really beautiful looking tomatoes down in there, which I plan on picking today. I'm gonna come around here slowly if I can. This, is, this bush is just filled with tomatoes which will be ready I'm sure in just a couple of days all right moving on all right here we are in the squash patch and peppers now as you can see the summer squash is doing just fine there's like I don't know four or five of them on there they're doing well this snapdragon has kind of gone nuts over the last few days um, these peppers here are doing good. These I'm pretty sure are Hungarian waxes. Um, let me see. These are cayenne red longs is what they're called. 
Now, today, you see this sorry looking little tomato here. He was in my pepper. And uh, I just took him out because it's, there's not enough room in the pot. So I took him out today, just stuck him in there. I don't know if it'll take root or if it won't. And it probably won't make anything anyway, but it doesn't matter. Not important. Over here, these peppers are doing fine. And these are the ones that are supposed to be extra hot. Uh, we'll see as they turn. They're supposed to turn an orange color. So we'll see when they do that, what happens. Now the other one, I'm not even sure of what kind it is. I, I don't see, these look like they're probably another cayenne, because they're awful small and skinny. So I would say they're probably cayenne. Boy, I'll tell you folks, it is hot here today. Up above, the sky is totally blue for a change, but it is hot. Okay, I'm going to slowly bring you down. Now, over here, kind of shading it, but this is the zucchinis finally taken off. And it usually takes about this long for it to really take off. As you can see, there's quite a few on there right now, and they're not looking all wonky. Now, these peppers are still producing tons of peppers. I've cut off about, oh, probably close to, I don't know, nine of them, ten of them already that are about five inches long. And they're mild though, so unfortunately they're, my husband likes them though. Now, over here are those little tiny cabbages that look sorry looking. But they are all doing super well now. They've finally taken hold. They're making little heads. And I noticed today when I went to water that the cucumbers are coming up, the seeds. So there's a chance that I might get some other cucumber plants. I don't see any more cucumbers on. Oh, wait, right at the top. You see it? It's right there. He's right there. They're starting to uh, do their thing now, so that's sweet. Over there are the blueberries. They're filled with blueberries. The bees are all, excuse me, all over them, and they're doing just great. Now here is a, nut, a Hungarian wax pepper. I'm pretty sure, yep. And these, of course, are the red cayenne slims and I'm not going to cut them because I want them to turn red so that's what I'll do so they'll be nice and hot okay now we're going to go on to the potato patch all right here we are at the potato patch and of course the four potatoes that have done the slowest but are already starting to flower I see and what I am planning on doing is I've learned recently that flowers do not have to stay on and what they'll actually do is suck the energy out of, of, out of the bottom. So I'm going to go through this along with doing so many other chores that I need to do and I'm going to add those chores, some of them that I've done, into this video. But as you can see right there, those are the plants that came from the uh, chitted ones. They are already flowering right there. The chitted ones are flowering, definitely. And for that matter, so are some of the other ones. Now, I've been feeling the pots and I haven't felt any potatoes yet, but you know, we still have two months to go. So we have hit the lettuce pretty hard as you can see and now the new stuff is starting to come up so that's a good thing especially the red stuff my husband likes that in his salads now here's that little bok choy and it's done its thing as far as it's gonna go and I'm getting ready to pull it because I just saw seeds in it today and it's time to come out the beets are all doing fine 
They are doing their thing. This beet here is just getting nice and big and fat. And here you can see some beets in there. They're doing well. There's another big one over here. They're all doing just great. There's like four of them in there. There's some right there. There's three or four more right there. And over here are my Blue Lake green beans that are now really starting to go. So I'm going to move you over to the other bush. And look at these tomatoes. They are beautiful. And the sad thing is, as soon as I pick them, my son just eats them. But they are really doing wonderfully. All right, I'm going to move you over to the bok choy now. Okay, guys, these bok choys are on their last leg. Many of them have gone to seed. Actually, I think all of them have gone to seed. This is one of those lettuces that I have left until the rest take hold. But I have one, two, three, four new bok choy on their way to becoming new ones and healthy ones. This will, a lot of it, I just gave away two of these bok choys to a, uh, a neighbor. And uh, the rest I'm going to take down. Uh, I'll make some stir fry and the rest will probably land up going to my worms because they're hungry, <laughs> if that makes sense. But they do get hungry and when you do run out of stuff to feed them, then you're in a bind. So this will probably become worm food. All right, I'm going to take you to the onions because they are getting really nice. Okay, so. The marigolds are starting to bloom along with the mamiliuses and we're going to walk over here to the onions. These are, uh, the marigolds here are just starting to bloom and this is kind of a dumb thing to do when I have the water on. but. Look at the onions. They all have balls on them. They're, these are the Spanish whites, most of them. I didn't get many Spanish yellows, but the Spanish whites seem to be doing very, very well. Nearly destroyed my camera just now. So anyway, back to the onions. There we go. We're looking really good. Bulbs are just great. I mean, I'm, I'm really amazed. And now I know when I can plant. And uh, that's what I'll be doing from now on. And even these uh, ones that went in late, the Walla Wallas, I'm sure that I'm going to get a few of those also. All right, over to the cabbages in the pots. This one in the big pots beginning to make a nice head here. Flower blooming. This one also is making a nice head. This one's doing okay, but not as great. But it's cooler over here and it's a lot shadier, except in the morning. Lilies are not blooming yet. These are doing okay, along with the snapdragons are starting to pick up now. They're awful, these, these are awfully crowded in here. And then, of course, we have the last cabbage. Now over here, I do have some purple lilacs that are doing really well, but they'll be getting ready to go too. My white ones have left this earth. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a walk down to the back and show you what's going on back there. All right, so this is the raspberries, and as you can see, Lots of flowers on them. So I think this year we're going to get some raspberries. 
The strawberries have not yet started uh, coming out, but they have lots of flowers and they're big flowers. I'm going to water them today. I'll have to drag, there's lilies in there too. I'm going to drag over uh, the hose and let it really soak this area down. Now you saw last time that this was full and bushy. I'm going to add on to this, at this point, what happened to the um, rhubarb. And right here, of course, more raspberries, more strawberries intermingled, and that's about it. This is the nicest this has looked in years back here. So I'm glad to see this going on. Hi guys, Sourdough Kathy here. Today I'm here making just a smish mash little uh, video and I decided to come out here because it's so nice. I just got done mowing the lawn and I noticed that the rhubarb was getting quite big. So I'm going to uh, find out just how much I got here. I'm going to scrap this. Some of it's going to go to my worms and some's going to go to my friends. Hi guys. This is Murr and this is Ernie over there. So as you can see, these are pretty nice chunks of bark. They're not good at all. I decided to uh, pull them out a little bit because otherwise the other ones behind it will be quite smaller. I'm really looking to see how many pounds this is because when I picked it up, <laughs> it was so heavy I couldn't carry it all. So what I'm going to do is I will continue to work on this and then I'll clean it all up and I will let you know just exactly how many pounds I got. Now some of it, I, like I said, I'll keep for myself and others I'll probably give away. Uh, but what I do is I cut them into one inch pieces and then I go ahead and I put them into freezer bags. Uh, the good freezer bags that uh, really do not allow the air in. So I will take care of this right now and I'll get back to you. So guys, here's what I got. I got five pounds, six ounces of rhubarb. And I also got some food from the ends for my worms and all of these leaves in a five gallon bucket and it's full. Uh, will go into my hot compost pile uh, along with all the grass that I just got done clipping. So we'll be on to the next project. One thing I've never shown you guys was my compost pile. Now I just put this on here a little while ago and I'm going to turn it over just a little bit because it was really hot and that's fine. That's what I wanted to do and I had but I had to add some paper to it in order to give it some carbon. in order to make it get hot again. So, I'm just giving it a quick turn here. And then I'm going to put my rhubarb leaves on top of it. This is not easy to do when you're in pain. I'll tell you that much. But one thing that's been good this year, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's just because I've been using a lot more green stuff, I usually get me some horse manure, but I haven't done that because of the fear that I don't know what's in the horse manure anymore. 
people are having so many problems with it. One thing nice about these rhubarb leaves, they really begin to break down fast. And it will heat up really quickly, especially with all this grass in here. But unfortunately, white paper does not break down fast, which is a pain. But as I said, I needed some carbon to go along with it. I'm gonna get some water cooking here on it. And it takes a lot of water. I put at least 50% ratio of water to my compost. Because if you don't, and you have dry stuff underneath, it's not going to heat up. It's not going to do anything. I'm going to move these just a little bit for a second so I can get that paper wet, which I didn't do. I hadn't planned on having. Boy, I'll tell you one thing we've had this year in Alaska, and I just squished. Mosquitoes are really bad this year. Last year we didn't have any. And I think it's because it was so hot. We didn't have any rain. Maybe two times, I think, in the whole summer. Now this year it's kind of like the opposite. We're having much more, more normal Alaskan weather here. I'm not sure of why the difference was. I have my but so that I don't have my friends thinking I'm a nutcase, which I know I'm not, I'll avoid that subject, even though homegrown veg did broach that subject a couple years ago. You really want to make sure it's wet, because if it isn't wet, it's not going to break down. I've watched, uh, long, long before I ever watched any videos on YouTube, I had always done this anyway. But then I started watching some YouTube videos by different uh, universities and whatnot that do composting and agricultural stuff. And they say that your water content should at least be 50% if you want to break things down properly. I'm going to show you over here in a minute last year's compost that still hasn't quite broken down well. And that's because last year I had a really bad time getting stuff to uh, get hot. It, for whatever reason, no matter the, the it can be as hot as Dickens outside. It can be 90 degrees, but if you don't have enough uh, carbon to, or actually you need a lot more greens than you do carbons to make this heat up. I have found this year by putting in a lot more grass clippings. I even threw in, uh, I had my son-in-law brought me a bunch of moose droppings and I smashed them all up and I threw them in here because they're very woody. So since they're woody, they act as a carbon. Because moose eat the bark off of the trees. They don't eat a lot of much of anything else. Now I'm apologizing for the road noise. Right here behind this fence is a uh, frontage road. So it's very difficult and I don't know if I can show you that um, or not. Right there is the frontage road right behind that fence there. Boy, the mosquitoes back here are really bad. I got enough water in there now and there's enough water in that grass and those greens there in order to start cooking things up so 
I'm going to take my black tarp, put it back on top, as I do. And I have a thermometer right there, and I stick it in the center somewhere. And right now, we'll see what it's reading. And I'll show you what this side looks like. I'm going to take you off the camera right now, off the stand, so bear with me a minute. I don't want to jack you around too much. This is my compost from last year. Right in there. I don't know how much I have there. But I also have this trash, 32 gallon trash bin full of it. I moved it into here, sorry about that, I moved it in so that I'd have more room for the new one over here. So that's it for this little bit, and we'll see you at the next one. Here's my compost pile, of which I did a video, a little piece, a clip, the other day, and I'm going to add it onto this, and as you can see, Things are breaking down very well. It's at 120 degree temperature, so that's really good. This is what I got off those tomato plants today. So everybody's going to be able to have more than one. So I think that's pretty good. All right, friends, I thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope you'll do all the cool stuff of checking, liking, giving me a comment subscribing and I thank you to all my new subscribers uh, God bless you and love you all bye bye